Congenital hyperinsulinism is a rare disease that results in unregulated secretion of insulin from the pancreas, and this causes dangerously low blood sugar levels. When there are low blood sugar levels, this means that the child is at increased risk of developing uh, neurological damage and in the most severe cases can even die. Some babies with hyperinsulinism who do not respond to treatment um, actually require some of their pancreas to be removed and uh, one of the consequences of this is that they can then get lifelong diabetes. In Exeter we've been studying the genetics of hyperinsulinism and we receive samples from uh, children diagnosed with the condition from all over the world. And when we screen the known causes in these children, we find the genetic cause in around half of all cases. So in Exeter, what we've been focusing on is trying to find the genetic cause of disease in the other 50% of cases. In the past, we've concentrated on searching for genetic causes of disease by focusing on genes which we knew were important in the diseased tissue. For example, in hyperinsulinism, we focused on genes which we knew had an important role in the pancreas because the pancreas is the organ that secretes insulin. Using a technique called whole genome sequencing, we sequenced 135 individuals with congenital hyperinsulinism and we found variants outside of the exome in a region affecting a gene called hexokinase 1 in 17 children with hyperinsulinism. And these variants were affecting a gene which wasn't usually present in the pancreas. So they were acting completely differently. These variants were working to switch the gene on in the pancreas, causing the hyperinsulinism. So the key to this discovery was that we had pancreatic tissue from children who'd undergone surgery as babies. And one of these children was called Tilly. So Georgina, I know we've spoken before, but I'm wondering if you could just sort of talk through about how, how things were when Tilly got diagnosed with hyperinsulinism. So back in, back in the early days of Tilly's diagnosis. Well, Tilly was only a few hours old and she'd had a low blood sugar. Um, and then she was taken to the neonatal unit where she spent about the next six to eight weeks I think about 13 days old, we had to fly to Berlin for a scan, for a PET scan, um, and the diagnosed diffuse hyperinsulinism. Um, but it was quite, it wasn't very easy, Tilly wasn't very stable. She had continuous beads um, because she, she was having continuous low blood sugars. But Tilly did have surgery to remove part of the pancreas just before her second birthday. Um, and then, yeah, after that, it, she still wasn't very stable. We were still on feeds and things like that. Um, and as Tilly's grown, I don't think it gets any easier. It, you just learn to live it. But obviously, as a new parent, it is very daunting and very, you know, worrying because all you think is the need to be fed because of the low blood sugars. You don't want to cause brain damage or anything like that. So it is very worrying time. Tilly's pancreas had been stored at Great Ormond Street Hospital in London and uh, we managed to get the sample sent to Exeter and by studying that tissue we were able to put the final piece of the jigsaw together. We were able to show that the hexakinase 1 gene was being expressed in Tilly's pancreas and that that was causing her hyperinsulinism. The genetic finding for us as a family has been fantastic really because you know we never knew why Tilly had hyperinsulinism and what the outcomes can be and you know, it, it, it's, it just means now we know that she still would need medication um, even after surgery, but she's definitely more stable than she was as a baby. And hopefully with the new genetic findings, there'll be new treatments that can be found to hopefully help families like ourselves. So these results are really important for the hyperinsulinism community. We have good evidence that they're going to be common cause of congenital hyperinsulinism, which will allow more children around the world to receive an accurate genetic diagnosis of their condition. Finding hexakinase 1 also provides a novel drug target, which means that we can start to think about tailoring treatment for children with HK1 hyperinsulinism. So these results are also really important for the scientific community, especially the research geneticists who are studying rare disease. What it tells us is that we need to focus our efforts on the non-coding genome and also now to specifically look at genes which are switched off in the disease tissue. We've really changed the way that we think about uh, genetic diseases and the causes of genetic diseases in children. 